Hey guys, welcome to ACO, and today we're going to be talking about Git and how to work with it in a collaborative environment. Now, we are making an assumption here that you have some basic knowledge of Git, uh, so push, pulling, cloning, and things like that. And if you don't know where, we're actually putting a video out for that, um, and we'll go more into detail and in depth about how to use Git as a tool. But for this specific video, we want to kind of lay a workflow on how to go about making branches using kind of ticketing systems and how you go in the process of resolving merge conflicts or what your overall workflow is for using Git in, uh, with Teams. All right, maybe you got a new job, maybe you started a new project, and you want to kind of have an idea and a layout for how you want to use Git. So this video is for you. If you have any comments, questions, or suggestions, please leave them down below in the comments. We'll be more than happy to take a look at them, answer them, because our objective here is for you to learn something. Here we have a GitHub repository, and we're going to work on this project one repo. And the idea, the mental framework that I want you to think is that you, you know, you got hired for a company and you're about to work on your first project, uh, or you're, you know, working on something personal and you bring other people in. So what's kind of the workflow that we'll be using? And what we want to do here is the first thing is we want to bring this code and we want to clone it or copy it to our local environment. The way we're going to do that is we're going to copy that code copy that text there and then do on our local or on our terminal git clone and paste that whole uh, link there. That is going to bring all the files and everything from uh, GitHub onto our local environment. Now I'm going to go into that folder, project one. And as you can see, I have the readme and the index.html, the same as here. So most of the time uh, you will find that a lot of places use some type of system to keep track of the tasks that they have assigned and where they are, right? They're being done, they're being worked on, have they already been finished? Are they waiting to be um, reviewed, etc.? So here we have a very simple Kanban system where we have three columns, what did it need to do, what's in progress, and what has already been done. And we're gonna take the ticket here, uh, number five, and as you can see, they have a, a number down here. Most of these uh, systems will numerate and, and give the the ticket, some type of notation here so you can keep track of them. So we're gonna work on this ticket, updating text on HTML. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna go here to my repository, I'm gonna create a branch. So I'm gonna do git a checkout dash B, like ticks uh, five, right? Because we're working on ticket number five here. And you can call this uh, different things. Most, most of the times there'll be like a feature branch and you can have a little bit more of details in the name um, or something as straightforward as, you know, the number of the ticket. So as you can see now, if you look here, we have master and we have moved from master to ticket five. So we have uh, effectively created our branch here. So I'm gonna go inside of ticket five here and I'm going to open this in VS code, the files are up here and we're gonna work on this index file and we're gonna change the body here to add a H1 that says hello world and that should be enough, right? We just wanted to update some of the text here. So I'm gonna go ahead and close that out. And now, as you can see, I'm gonna do a git status and we will see that, hey, you modified a file, so we need to go through the whole process of saving this and doing and committing it. So I'm gonna do git add, I'm going to do git commit. I'm gonna pass in a message here. I'm gonna say number five is our ticket, uh, updated the text. Uh, that's it. And now this has saved my changes or snapped a snapshot of my changes to my local uh, to my local repository to my computer here. But I need those changes in that branch to be up in GitHub. So I'm going to go and do a git push dash u origin and then the name of the branch. In this case, our branch is called ticks dash five. All right, that's going to take a second and it's going to upload all my changes up to GitHub. So if I go here to code and we look at uh, branches here and we also have this uh, toast message at the top telling us, hey, you created a branch by the way. So we have this uh, text, uh, text number five branch that we just created. And if I go into that, we'll see that that is our branch and it was updated <clears throat> about 44 seconds ago. Perfect. So now that we have all this, uh, before we go ahead and bring that code into master, uh, it's a really good habit that after you did git add git commit, you want to do a git pull um, 
origin master. And the reason that you're doing this is you want to bring any changes that have been made in master and you want to grab those changes and bring it into your branch. So that way, when you do a pull request, you have no merge conflicts, you have no issues and your branch is kind of up to par with master. So now that they are good, right? We see that there's already up to date. There's nothing else uh, that needs to be brought in. We're going to go ahead and make a pull request. So we can do that here in the uh, GitHub uh, UI in the GitHub website. So we're going to go ahead and pick our branch. We can do with the tag up here, or we can also go to the branch and do it here where it says create new pull request. Now this will create a new pull request. You can put some information um, added hello world here. Now you can put more details as needed. Not all pull requests will need a lot of detail, some more, some less. And now we, ha we have here the pull request and it's going to check, right? Uh, that all pull request is being merged into master correctly and that there is no merge conflicts. So since there is no merge conflicts, we get this green uh, button here saying we're all good to go. And it has like a double confirmation process. Uh, most of the time, if you're not merging this yourself, most of the time you're going to create that pull request and you're probably going to share that with your team. And then somebody on your team will look at your pull request and make sure that, you know, you didn't uh, maybe let a console console log go through there or you forgot something inside of your code. So that's the idea of pull requests is, you know, another set of eyes to, to make sure that the, the code is up to up to the standard of the team. So once you were able to approve this and merge this, this has been done. As you can see, it turns purple. If I go back to my code, now I'm looking at the master branch, right? You will see that this was updated three minutes ago and that the text is, or the comment of the last commit message here is uh, five uh, number five updated the text. So now we can go to our project here and go to our board. Now we can move our ticket from uh, in progress to done. So that way here on our local, since this was emerged in, and since we're making branches depending on the tickets, we most likely are not going to need to open this ticket again or this branch again. So we're going to go ahead and delete that. So I'm going to go and check out to master. So get check out master, and this will bring me back to master. And I'm going to get again, all the changes, right? I'm going to get all the changes that are in my GitHub repository and not on my local. So since we just made a pull request here, I need to go do a git pull, and that's going to fetch all the changes and update master with those changes. As you can see here, uh, index was updated, and there were 18 kind of changes in there between deleted and added uh, characters. Now that this is done, I can do a git branch dash capital D for delete, and then the name of the branch, right? And that was ticks five. So the branch has been deleted. Now this has been deleted from my local branch. This has not been deleted from the remote branch. So that means if I come here, the branch is still going to be there because I've deleted again on my local, not on, uh, not on my uh, GitHub repository or my online repository. So let's take a look also when you might get a conflict. So here I have uh, ticket number 10. I'm gonna move it over from to do to progress and we're just gonna update the title and the text. So let me go ahead and open this in my code editor. And as you can see, this is a file that we've been working with uh, before. I'm gonna go ahead and just delete some of this text and I'm going to type in this is a test. And below, I'm gonna also delete this text and I'm gonna update to no conflict needed. Perfect. And the last thing is I'm just gonna change the title from Will to Echo and we should be good. I'm gonna go ahead and save this file and I'm going to go back to my uh, branch here and I'm going to git add. So I make sure like to take a snapshot of my code. I'm doing uh, git commit dash M. I'm gonna put a message here. I'm gonna start with the hashtag 10. So we're talking about that specific ticket and then a little message, you know, what has been done. Now I'm gonna go and do git push dash u origin master because this is the first time I'm pushing this branch up to my GitHub repository. And once is uh, once that is done, uh, that should be in GitHub. So we can now go ahead and take a look at this. So we see here at the top that we have a compare and pull request. This is just the branch that we just pushed. So uh, now we see this red sign at the top saying we cannot merge this automatically. And this is most likely due to a merge conflict. Now if you scroll all the way to the bottom, you'll see that on the left side, you have your master branch and on the right, you'd have this ticket 10 branch and what's highlighted in dark green and dark red are the items that have changed on both branches. Let's go ahead and create a pull request 
and this will turn gray and it'll say this branch has conflicts we have to check them out we have to resolve them before we can continue so let's go ahead and first we're going to pull everything from uh, origin master and this is going to bring us all the changes that are on our github repository on the master branch and we can see that there is a conflict here right uh, it's a merge conflict and it's happening inside of the index.html file now let's go ahead and look at this inside of our code editor and we're going to see that at the top the dark purple would be what we just did uh, at the bottom the dark blue color would be what's coming from master i can go ahead and accept both or i can accept one or the other in this case i'm going to take our current changes since that's what i would like to be in master um, please make sure that you go ahead and save your file. A lot of people tend to forget that. And now we have to go through the same process of doing a git add, git commit. Let's add a message here, um, conflict uh, resolved, conflict resolution. And uh, then we're going to go ahead and push this up to GitHub. Now, again, we're doing this because git adding a commit is taking a snapshot of our code and we have made changes to our code. So that's why we have to go ahead and make the commit. Uh, this will update the pull request and we'll see that this is good to go. I'm gonna go ahead and confirm this. And now this should have been merged and has been merged into the master branch. So if I go ahead and check master, we're gonna see that the index.html has been updated, uh, had been two minutes ago, right? And now I can go ahead and check out to master and I'm going to pull, which is gonna bring all the latest code from the GitHub repository into my local branch. And I'm gonna go ahead and delete this branch because we don't need it anymore. We're working on tickets. So we do git branch dash D, uh, ticket 10, and then that way we can delete it. So working with teams, the objective is going to be to constantly pull uh, from master, keep your code up to date. This will help to avoid having to resolve very big conflicts, and this is gonna make your day-to-day -day a lot easier. It's been a pleasure uh, to help you out with this workflow. Let us know if you have any questions or suggestions uh, we're going to try to look at them and answer them and give you a hand. Once again, our objective here at ACCO is for you guys to take something, to learn something, and we would love to help you in that journey. Thank you very much and see you on the next video.